Charles Martel is a fan favorite commander in Rise of Kingdoms for both free to play players and infantry players alike. And as I'm sure many of you know, his relic recently got a buff to give him even more stats for infantry. So today we're going to do a deep dive into the skills and talents of Charles Martel. Now, Charles Martel is one of my personal favorite commanders here in Rise of Kingdoms. And the fact that he comes around in gold keys in the first season and even before the first season of KVK makes him super usable by a ton of different players. Now, if you're a new player to the game, we're going to take a look at the different different skills and talents so we can get a better idea of exactly what Charles Martel is doing in the open field if you've been playing the game for years I'm sure you already know that part but later in the video we're going to talk about the pros the cons whether you should use universal commander sculptures on Charles Martel as well as some of the best pairs for him for free-to-play players and pretty much anybody who plans on using him in the open field so the first thing we have to do is take a look at his active skill this says a rage requirement of a thousand and it deals 30 percent increased damage for four seconds and you also gain a shield for the those four seconds with a damage factor of 1200. This is a surprisingly good active skill because 30% increased damage for four seconds is a really powerful buff. There's no cooldown here. So the faster you can pop your active skills, the more often you're going to have 30% bonus damage. And that's normal attack damage, counter attack damage, skill damage, any sort of damage that you're doing. This is going to buff it all while making you a little bit more tanky. Now, if we look at his second skill before his expertise, he gains 15% defense and 15% health. These are the two most important stats for infantry in the open fields in garrisons in even in rallies so the fact that he's giving you 30 percent of super important infantry stats is really really good and it's on his second skill which means it's very accessible for players who want to do something like a 5511 configuration the third skill is really unfortunate it's 10 percent attack to your garrison and 10 percent defense to your watchtower but this is only applicable when defending your own city so this skill does nothing if he's in a flag or if he's in a fort it is just for city defense and the 10 percent garrison attack is nice because it is for any troop type so it's not just for infantry but the watchtower defense is basically ne negligible it doesn't really do anything at all at least in the late game and if we take a look at his fourth skill this gives him 30 percent increased counter attack damage this is a really good fourth skill it's basically just raw damage if people decide to swarm down your charles martel this is the skill that makes him a little bit prickly and his active skill in his second skill make him a little bit tanky so swarming him down really is it's gonna hurt more than you might think especially because of that 30 percent all damage now if we take a look at his expertise here what it does is it gives him even more stats on his second skill bumping the defense and health up to 20 percent and then also giving him 20 percent march speed which makes charles martel one of the fastest infantry commanders in rise of kingdoms which is honestly that's really unique and it makes him really good even in the late game because even if you look at some of the newest infantry commanders like Tark, for example in the open field he only gains 10 percent of infantry march speed and that's only when outside of alliance territory now the downside here is that you do have to expertise him to get this so a lot of players aren't going to have access to that march speed which is unfortunate but it is quite good now there's a couple of different talent builds that you can use here for charles martel the one that you see here is actually one that i use if i use a herald behind him so we come all the way up here to testudo formation it has a 10 percent chance of reducing all damage you take by 15 percent it's only for one turn but it's a nice 15 percent damage taken reduction i also came up here and grabbed balance which reduces the damage you take by 3% but it also reduces your own damage output this is a little bit of a give and take but honestly for using martel primary you probably are looking for the most tanky option anyway so this is probably what you're looking for i also grabbed loose formation which is a no-brainer nine percent less skill damage you take and medicinal supplies is really something that i only get if i plan on pairing him with herald because every time you use an active skill you gain 300 healing factor and herald as you know pops his active skill way more frequently than most commanders which means he does actually get a little bit of nice healing here but I would say for most commander pairs you probably don't really need medicinal supplies because you can save eight talent points here by just avoiding it and you can put that somewhere else up here we grabbed iron spear because I think you're going to deal a lot of damage to cavalry anyway cavalry are the open field meta right now so dealing more damage to them is important undying fury is also important because it's just a little bit of a rage engine here we grab strong up body six percent health just getting even more health for Charles Martel is super important up on the top left here we grabbed hold the line 10 percent chance again to reduce damage taken by 20 percent for two seconds so another way to be a little bit more tanky and then we grabbed one percent of defense now if you're not using him with heralds and we'll talk more about the commander pairs later in the video this is a build that i think is pretty good for most players you can see that we still grab burning blood and master armorer 
we skip the testudo formation because it's actually a lot of points just to gain one second of reduced damage we grab loose formation no weakness and spiked armor and then we go all the way to the top of the infantry tree and literally fill this out entirely making sure to grab the extra march speed off to the side here as well as the one point of health and defense and an elite soldiers is just going to give you seven and a half percent of stats which is just going to give you even more stats for your charles martel now if you wanted to you could remove a point from defense and put it over here into the additional march speed or if you want to ignore this march speed entirely and ignore some of the march speed over here you could come up and grab balance as well if you'd rather have a little bit more tankiness than that march speed and finally if you're going to use him for your city wall this is something that i would recommend now i don't typically recommend that you take any rallies to your city especially if you're a free to play player and most players who have charles martel on their wall are probably free to play but all you really need from the garrison tree is the first row of talents here okay you grab nowhere to turn impenetrable fortifications empty fortress stratagem and impregnable most of the points are going to go over here into the defense tree but you want to make sure to avoid the medicinal supplies you don't want to have any healing on your wall because that is just going to fill your hospital even faster and of course you grab balance to studio formation and loose formation now here we only go a little bit into the infantry tree because when you're on your wall you're gonna have a lot of other troops that aren't infantry so bonus points to infantry all these little bubbles here these are not going to do anything for a majority of your units when he's on your city wall but call of the pack does actually grant uh, defense to all troop types not just infantry so that's really important to grab normal attack damage of course is for all units extra rage is for all units and here this is of course only for infantry but really you have three points left over and where else are you going to put it there is literally like no better option there's march speed infantry health and then these two talents are absolutely useless because they're for your watchtower so this is uh, in my opinion the best city defense build for charles martel if you're going to use him that way now let's talk about some of the pros of charles martel okay of course just like isong ye or richard or mehmed he is a very early game commander that you're going to gain access to very quickly depending on how lucky you are or if you are a spender but getting him from the gold keys means that he's very free to play friendly okay using him at five five one one gives you a majority of his value i would say probably about 80 percent 75 percent of his value is at five five one one and that makes him again very free to play friendly you can slap him behind pretty much any infantry commander and it's going to add a ton of stats to them it's going to add if he's expertise a little bit of march speed that they desperately need and it's going to make him a little bit more tanky and prickly if he is swarmed down as we just talked about he's also somebody that you can use on your city wall without having to invest in an actual garrison commander a lot of players are using like Zenobia YSS on their wall for example but that is a massive investment for a city defense that you typically are not really going to ever take so he's basically your best free city garrison that you can get in the game which again you shouldn't really be taking rallies but he does fill that role really nicely and like I mentioned he's just a really good universal commander you can just slap him behind any infantry unit and he's very useful now beyond that he also gains a really nice relic here in the season of conquest which makes him even more usable as a free to play commander you see here when you just unlock this relic you gain 25 percent attack and five percent health just giving him even more stats and especially the attack which he didn't have before now with the new relic he gets 35 percent of attack and 10 percent health and honestly I think the extra attack here is very underrated I think 35 percent of attack is a ton for a commander that has 30% bonus damage, 30% bonus counter attack damage, and already has a ton of the other tanky stats that you really would want. So giving that infantry attack to whoever the primary commander is for Charles Martel is just a slam dunk. And he's basically just a super tanky stat stick. That's what he is. He's just giving you a ton of every single stat. Okay. We're looking at 35% of attack, total of 30% infantry health, 20% infantry defense, 20% infantry march speed. He's just giving you every single stat and he's giving you a really nice amount of all of it which is super super good this relic makes him in my opinion still relevant in the season of conquest especially now that he's gotten a little bit of an upgrade here as well now there are some cons to charles martel of course uh one of the first ones being that because he's a gold key commander typically you don't want to put any legendary commander sculptures into him because you're just going to get him for free over time if we take a look here i have 564 legendary commander sculptures of martel 
that are just sitting there doing nothing because I did actually use some universals on him not too many but I did want to unlock his expertise and now I do regret it a little bit because they're just those are wasted sculptures but if you are relying on only gold keys to getting him it's going to take a really long time to expertise him probably about three to four years depending on how lucky you are yes you heard me correctly if you're only using gold keys it will take between three and four years to expertise this commander free to play only and that is definitely disheartening but the good news again like I said 5511 is he's very usable at that point so you don't really have to worry about it after that it'll probably take you about a year or a year and a half to get him to that 5511 mark another con of Charles Martel is that he's not doing any skill damage and that is definitely the meta right now if you look at all the most popular and most powerful commanders in the game they're all doing either massive skill damage with debuffs or massive AOB damage just raw damage like uh Isong Ye for example and unfortunately Charles Martel does not have that all right he's relying only on normal attack damage and counter attack damage and sort of just being a little bit tanky and in the late game in late game season of conquest that can definitely be a little bit underwhelming for players who are looking for just massive dps charles martel isn't really going to provide that so the damage output on him is a little bit lackluster in the late game especially if you are a low spender or even a well you're going to have probably better options than charles martel eventually but he is surprisingly good for a long period of time now i think everybody can use him at 5511 and the wells i think you know of all of the gold key commanders if you're going to put universals into any of them I would say Mehmed is probably your first option and then followed up by that would be Charles Martel if not uh they're probably neck and neck to be completely honest with you in the late game I think Mehmed is better in the early game I think Charles Martel is pretty much just as good and a lot of you might be saying okay well if it takes three to four years to get him expertise free to play why shouldn't I invest universal commander sculptures into him and the reason for that is because after that 5511 mark really you're not I mean it's not really going to move the needle for the rest of your account right even though you might want him expertise those universal commander sculptures are just better used on other commanders like CPO, like Guan Yu, like Boudicca, like Nevsky, like YSG, like Alexander the Great, right? There's a ton of other commanders in the game where like, yes, you know, you could theoretically put them into Martel to get him expertise, but you don't really need it, right? You don't really need it. It's not really going to change the status of your account. You're not going to be exponentially better. Even if you have like a five, three, one, one, you know, putting a couple of sculptures into him isn't really going to move the needle in the long run. And it's just kind of a waste of those sculptures. So most players should not be investing universals in him and should not be expertising him, but pretty much everybody can use him, which is the big benefit of Charles Martel. And also it's worth noting that, and if you didn't know this, every relic is usable without expertising that commander. So even if he's five, one, 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 when you get into season of conquest, you can unlock his relic and boom, you automatically get 45% bonus stats for him which is just really nice that's literally more stats than his second skill okay so just to put that into perspective okay now let's talk about some of the best commander pairs for Charles Martel first let's talk about some of the best free to play pairs okay in the early game honestly Sun Tzu is probably your best option for Charles Martel because he's obviously an epic commander so everybody's gonna have access to him and everybody will eventually expertise him there's some really nice synergy here there is also a couple of downsides unfortunately but both of these commanders are just really solid okay Okay, Sun Tzu is providing the AOE that Charles Martel does not have okay it hits five targets which is very rare in the game most commanders do not have a five target AOE so that's very good it's a thousand damage factor for all of them and the damage factor is not reduced by each additional target that you hit so this is literally a better or I should say deals more damage than Ethel Flood, for example who is a legendary commander so that's insane but on top of that you gain 50 rage for each target that's hit by this skill and that's actually huge because Charles Martel has no rage engine at all so if you hit three targets that's 150 rage if you hit five targets that's 250 rage and that rage engine is just going to pop off his shield skill even more which you remember gives you 30 percent bonus damage and that's huge you're also gaining 10 percent infantry health here and reducing the damage you take by 10 percent so this is even more tanky okay this is just adding to those raw stats that charles martel already has and unfortunately the 20 percent increased skill damage on sun Tzu does not benefit charles martel at all so really all he's doing here is nice aoe nice rage regeneration a little bit more tankiness and i think that's a slam dunk i think sun Tzu primary would be a higher damage output but the problem with that is he's a purple commander which means he's going to be super easy to swarm down so realistically you're probably going to use charles martel primary which is unfortunate because you know I think the skill tree is better than the defense tree but that's just how it's gonna have to be and the defense tree honestly
honestly isn't horrible if you're more interested in debuffing the enemy in the early game then you could do a Bjorn behind him as well and this is going to do a very small single target damage but what it is going to do when he's expertise is it's going to make the target you're hitting and two other targets take 15 percent increased skill damage for three seconds which is honestly pretty good he's giving you 20 percent of infantry stats and a 10 percent chance to instant proc 800 damage factor which again more damage on Charles Martel is what he needs but I think Sun Tzu's probably still a better pick as you can imagine you could slap an ethel fled behind charles martel as well if you want to hide your ethel fled and also deal some nice really really powerful aoe damage and also a super powerful debuff here you also take 20 percent less counter attack damage which is even more tanky and you're going to be slowing down the target so your other marches can hit that target if you do this i would say go all in on infantry remember you're going to have charles martel primary so you're going to have that infantry tree so you can ignore the bonus uh, attack over here on ethel fled's fourth skill and again 20 increased damage to slow targets is nice if it compounds especially with the 30 increased damage on charles martel's active skill or if one casts before the other then it's 30 damage and then 20 damage and by the time that's over you're probably going to be dealing 30 damage again for the same reason that you would use ethel fled or sun tzu you could use mehmed if you have him at any sort of usable level and again you're just hiding an aoe commander behind charles martel in the open field five target aoe is huge 20 bonus attack for any troop type which includes infantry which is nice and you're going to bring more troops to the battlefield which makes you even more tanky and you're going to deal even more damage i think there's better pairs for mehmed because he does want a rage engine and a skill tree but unfortunately Martel doesn't have that but you could still use him if you have no other options now once you get into season two of kvk you're gonna have alexander the great and i think alexander the great with a charles martel is an exceptionally good combination now again unfortunately there's no uh massive aoe or skill damage on these commanders you do have some skill damage on the second skill from alexander the great and the interesting thing is that you can flip these two around if you want a more aggressive approach you could do alexander the great primary if you want a more defensive and tanky approach you could do martel primary with his defense tree the great part about this pairing here is that um you have double shields now they don't perfectly stack but they are really nice and this is a relatively supportive march in the open field as well because of alexander the great's expertise enemy targets are going to take 30 percent increased damage and your martel is going to deal 30 percent increased damage so that can stack really nicely you also can't reduce the damage that martel will be dealing with this second skill here on alexander the great and you're just going to gain a ton of attack so whereas martel gives you tanky stats alex is giving you attack stats and 30 percent of march speed so an alexander the great with charles martel is going to be one of the fastest march speed infantry marches that you can use in rise of kingdoms also you're going to gain even more benefit out of the fourth skill when you have this paired because you're going to have a shield up for longer because you have two shields right so you're going to gain even more defense here than attack typically or it'll probably be actually about 50 50 but this pairing is exceptionally good for kvk2 I do just want to note really quickly on Richard, which I know is a KVK one commander, but this commander, I don't think is great for PVP. Um, neither Martel nor Richard are going to deal a lot of damage. They're just going to be sort of a punching bag in the open field. But one use for a Richard Martel is that uh, it's extremely tanky for PVE content. Okay. So whether you're doing Kurok ceremony or trial of the co Kurok, or if you need just a tank for your early game expedition, uh, a Richard Martel combination is probably going to be the way to go. I would say you probably want a Richard primary, but it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, the, it's a small benefit here of casting Richard's active skill first, because when he heals, you're going to have a little bit more troops for the active skill of Martel, which deals 30% more damage. So 30% more damage to more troops is better than less troops. And also you're going to slow them down with this active skill. And so you're more more likely to stay connected with Charles Martel's active skill popping second but again it, it's not a really big deal if you don't want to spend all the experience it takes to get Richard to level 60 then you can just do Martel primary moving on to season of conquest this is where Martel becomes really flexible and you can literally slap him behind pretty much any commander in the game okay CPO primary with Martel secondary is a really nice combination again CPO also is great with pretty much anybody but CPO is giving Charles Martel all the things that he desperately needs he's giving him massive AoE he's giving him debuff Buff. he's giving him more march speed more attack he's giving him another shield some direct damage factor some infantry health he's giving him the support tree which has rejuvenate for a little bit of a rage engine here so 
this combination is great and again Scipio is good on his own so putting Martel behind him is just going to make him even more difficult to swarm down and it's going to make him even more tanky so those are two things that you really want for your Scipio to be honest with you because he is often uh targeted if he is seen as a primary uh, I think Harold is probably my favorite commander pair with Charles Martel in season of conquest again if you want a more tanky build you would do Martel primary that I think is more likely to be swarmed in season of conquest so just be careful with that but if you want a more aggressive damage dealing approach you would go with Harold primary for sure which I have actually been leaning more towards uh in the past I've leaned more towards Martel primary but now I do lean more towards a Harold primary because of the skill tree and really uh, Martel and Harold are a match made in heaven this is basically the poor man's version of a Pakal Harold Harold when he's surrounded is going to deal some nice AoE damage and he gains 20 percent increased damage whenever this skill is used he's going to pop this skill a ton and if you remember the active skill on Martel also gives you 30 percent bonus damage so with the skill tree and just the massive rage cycle here on Harold you're going to be popping the active skills for both a ton which increases the uptime of the 30 percent damage on Martel and the uptime of that uh shield which is really nice also Harold is very squishy a lot of players don't know this about him but he basically sacrifices his defense for an absolutely ridiculous amount of infantry attack so the fact that you're gaining a bunch of defensive stats on Charles Martel is exactly what Harold needs and also you're gaining even more of the attack from his relic 35 percent uh with the recent update is huge and the March speed is really important for Harold because he only gets 10 percent so you're giving him 20 percent more I think this is really a match made in heaven and it's very very good so all in all I do think that Charles Martel is still a commander that you can use in season of conquest and the recent buff to his relic pretty much guarantees that unless you're a whale who just has access to even more high damage output commanders in which case Charles Martel might find his way to the bench even with the recent relic upgrade with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video or you learned something drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so otherwise of kingdoms players might see it we're so close to 50,000 subscribers so consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on charles martel are you still using him here in 2023 what do you think of him do you like him or do you think that he's kind of fallen off with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace